In this video, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna create a blueprint with an animated asset and using colliders, we're gonna set up logic that we can automate animations inside of Unreal Engine. This video comes as part two, um, and we'll post a link to the other video where we built this asset from scratch, but now we're gonna package this up and similar to how I've used fields and cloners and automating animation inside of Cinema 4D, it's a little bit of a different workflow, but we're gonna package up this animation and be able to use triggers to automate how we're gonna animate this asset. It's gonna be awesome. I have this simple scene we're gonna start off with and I'm using this flower model that I created in a previous video, which we will post a link to if you wanna see how this was built in Cinema 4D and animated. And I've brought it into this sequencer scene just to show what it is that we're going to make. So this is an Alembic, and I'm using this geometry cache to create this blooming flower. Now, ultimately what I want is that this would be a smaller asset, and I wanna duplicate this all over the place so that I can then control how this flower blooms. But instead of duplicating a bunch of these, having to manually bring it in and set the geometry cache and do it. It's just a lot of manual keyframing, even though this is kind of buttoned up into one uh, piece. I wanna be able to set all this up based off triggers. So let's see how we're going to do that. So to start off, we're just gonna delete this and do a fresh scene. And I'm gonna show you the model that I've got in here. I have this model that was brought in it came in with these cinema 4d materials and i went ahead and before this video just set up some uh, set up some materials using the cart and horse material pack and kind of played around with some of these but we got this thing just prepped and ready to go so we don't have to spend time dealing with that so the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to make a new blueprint so let's go into this blueprint folder and we're gonna make a new blueprint class. We want this to be an actor, and we'll call this BP Flower Bloom 2, because it's gonna be a second one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this in here. So for now, let's expand this window open to see what we're going to do. And it's this is a pretty simple setup to get this going. So going back to our flower, I'm gonna drag in the Alembic file with the geometry cache into here into our blueprint and now we're going to set this up so we'll start with compiling we're going to go into the event graph and there's two functions we're going to be dealing with we won't need the event tick for this and we won't need begin play but we are going to hold on to the event actor begin overlap the first thing i'm going to want to do is make a custom event that's going to trigger this animation so let's go ahead and right click here we're going to type in custom event we will call this flower bloom trigger. And really at this point, there's only a couple more things we really need to do. So we're gonna bring our flower asset in that we brought in. We're gonna drag from this node so that we're only accessing what's available. And we're going to set start time offset. And this which we've talked about in a few other videos, but this is going to control the animated keyframes that we have on the Alembic file from start to finish. So we are using our flower, we're referencing the start time offset, that's what we wanna control. But before we do that, we need to control the animation. So we're gonna drag off of here, and we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and add a timeline. Let's clean this up. Okay, so our timeline is going to be our keyframe information that we're going to use to control this Alembic. So we're gonna start by double clicking this. We're going to create a new track and we're going to make a float track. And if you're not sure, you can go back to your cinema file, but I'm gonna open up this asset that I have. We're gonna go down into this index, and I just wanna see how long this is. So if I open this guy up. All right, duration, two seconds. So that's gonna be my timing for this. So I shouldn't need these again. So my first track that I've got here, we're gonna set this length to two seconds. So that's gonna be zero to one, and we don't need to control anything after that. We're just gonna time this guy. And pretty straightforward at this point, 
this new track, let's just rename it really quick and we'll call this Flower Bloom Timeline. And that's gonna be our output info. So when we go back to the event graph, we have our Flower Bloom Timeline. So you can see what that is. So we're gonna right click here, add a keyframe. And I'm gonna set this to zero at the time and zero to value. And we're gonna treat this like zero to 100%. So I'm gonna go to two seconds, add another keyframe. I'm gonna make sure this is at two and this value is at one. So now you can see we have linear animation. So all the easing, all the custom animation that we have done that's baked into that Alembic, this will scrub this exactly how we have it. And the great thing about this timeline note is we can come back later and add more keyframes. So if you just, it's not quite the way you want it. You don't have to go all the way back into cinema and retime it. You can tweak it and add additional easing and timing on top of it, which is super nice. So next step. Next step, I'm gonna go back into the event graph and it's pretty straightforward at this point. We're gonna take this update and drive this into the start time offset. So we've got this event, it's going to play that two seconds worth of keyframe information and it's going to control the start time offset parameter of our flower bloom asset. And from here, we're gonna take that float that we have and plug it into here. So now this timeline is controlling the information in here and that's the basic setup for this event and now the last thing we want to do is we want to tell this well we'll set up our triggers because that's what we're going to control this on so if we come back into here i'm going to come up to add and i'm just going to do a oops a box so under collision box collision and this is going to be great for me doesn't need to be exact. I just want it to be within this range. So let's see. That's already the right height. We are, I'm just gonna put this inside of here a bit. So it's encapsulated. So we'll say 18 and 18 on the width. So now when our collider is going to hit this, it's going to trigger this animation. And I'm gonna show you how to set that up now. Okay, so back into our event graph. We don't need to reference this because this box collisions inside the blueprint. It's going to interact with the one that we're gonna make in the level coming up. So the last thing we need to do is drag out from here and we're gonna reference our flower bloom trigger that we just made up here. And that's it. So the way to read this is on event overlap. So when our trigger is collided with our box collision or whatever collision we're gonna use out in our scene, fire this event. And then this event is going to play the timeline and run through the start time offset. And at this point, our asset is ready to go. So we'll come back in here shortly and we'll, we'll do some tweaking, but I'm gonna show you how this sets up. So now, as you can see, we've got this asset in the scene and now we're ready to test it. Okay, in our level sequence, what we can do now is we don't really have to keyframe anything on this object because this animation is going to be automated. But what we do need to do is we need to set up something in this scene that's going to trigger this. So what we can do is go up to add and under basic, you have the box trigger or the sphere trigger. So for now, we're gonna use the box and I'll show you how this is gonna work. So we zero this guy out. Let's go through and adjust the width and the depth and make this like a wall. So when this is actually going to hit this thing, it's going to trigger it. Now, when we go into hit play in game mode, this is going to disappear. Oh, okay. So before we animate this, there's one more thing we need to do inside of this that I forgot to do. When we click on our flower bloom, we need to make sure we turn off running and looping and recompile. That means that this is not going to automatically start once the level starts, which I forget about every single time. And now we can go ahead and animate this. So we're gonna animate our box trigger. We bring this in. We're gonna add a transform track to it and we are just going to do some crude animation. We'll start and go to the end and have this sweep through. And it just needs to touch it. It doesn't need to go all the way through it. And we trigger this again. So now when we go to actually play this, we can't see it because it goes away. So one thing I like to do for testing is 
we're just gonna make a very quick cube. I'm gonna make it a movable cube and a child of this trigger. And now if I put this inside of this box, we'll make it nice and small and I'll put this right up on the front edge. So now I can see when this is going to go and it's going to actually hit this thing. And we'll shrink this down so it's not so obtrusive. And we're, that's it, we're ready to test. The only thing now we need to do is if you notice that when this piece actually touches it in sequencer, it's not going to trigger. And that's because we need to actually be in play mode. And in play mode, this is how the movie render queue is going to access all this information. So it's the equivalent of hitting play, um, which is also why we know this is going to work in the output. So now if I hit play and we let this go, once it touches that box, it now fires this animation, which is exactly what we want to do. And we can stop this and it will restart. So I've set up one more of scene of these with a bunch of these just to kind of show where the, some of the power of this starts. And when I open this up, I have a box trigger in, which I was initially thinking if you wanted this to be a wave and you wanted these to all bloom consecutively, you can. But I've set up a sphere trigger, which you can see is right here in the center. And it's going to expand and get bigger and trigger all of these as it goes out. So this could actually be like a shock wave from the inside. And if I run this to demonstrate it, you can start to see how all of these can be triggered at once. And this is just key framing uh, the scale of this thing. And that is one thing to note as well. You have the shape and the radius that you can control. I found that controlling this actually doesn't work. Try to make this at zero and expand it to 100 or whatever it is. It doesn't work, but if you do animate the scale, that does work. So now you have a few options of how you can trigger these events and stack them up. And the great thing about this is if I wanna go through and change this version, which I've already done. Let's bring this blueprint over. So the original version of this that I had made, I came back and did some iterating on this, but it's nice is that all of these are the same. So in this timeline, I actually made this track three seconds instead of two, and I aggressively put the easing out at the end. So it didn't feel like it came to as abrupt of a stop, and I slowed it in the beginning too, so it had more of a natural uh, feel to it. And this was nice, because I didn't have to go back into cinema, I didn't have to rebuild the file, I could just override those keyframes that are baked into the Alembic to get this, uh, working exactly the way that I wanted it. And at this point, you can kind of play with these however you want, but you can see like, you can just stack up a ton of these and it's amazing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you're interested and you wanna go back further, feel free and watch the video of how I showed you how we're gonna create this asset from scratch. And that will lead into how we build this into a blueprint. Thank you.